Let's get down to the real business of taking care of the people. We can't have a testimony without a test. And we are being tested whether we have courage enough, conviction enough, people power enough to stand up and do what is right for ourselves and generations yet unborn. Come on. I'm mad that we got to beg people in power to know that the wages of everyday people are not keeping up in, with inflation. I'm mad as hell that our young people have to graduate with a degree in one hand and debt in the other, over a trillion dollars worth of debt. I'm mad as hell that we got to beg people to understand that we must protect Mother Earth to have anything. Oh yeah, I'm mad. I'm mad that my sisters and brothers on the south side of Chicago with a Democrat in power just say, ouch, if it hurts. That mamas and daddies and grandmamas have to worry about whether or not their babies can walk the streets in America. Oh yeah, I'm mad about a whole lot of stuff. But I want us to channel this anger, this is important. Channel the anger and the passion that we have into action. Oh my God, I am here in Chicago, Chi-Town, with the amazing Naomi Klein. We are at the People's Summit 2017. What brings you to the People's Summit this year? Well, I think we need, we need spaces to strategize so, so badly, right? I mean, we are in this incredible moment where we now know that a transformative, progressive, radical, revolutionary, whatever you want to call it, political uh, agenda could actually achieve power. Now, why do you call it an extraordinary <laughs> moment? Because some people would say, oh my God, you know, life is over as, as I know it because of certain someone uh, made it to the White House. Right, well, it's, it's, it, it's yeah, both so things, right? Um, you know, thinking about the People's Summit, because this is, you know, the, the, in some ways this is, well, it's the house that the nurses built, but it's also the yes, house that is. Bernie built. You know, there's so many people here with their old Bernie swag, yes. where, you know. Yeah. And, and so it's the tension of this moment, right, is the, this current system that we are in is, 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 is re has reached crisis levels on so many fronts. Inequality is at crisis levels. Systemic racism, gender exclusion, and mis misogyny, but did we climate just, change. But did we just get there, Naomi? I mean, weren't we at crisis level four years ago, eight years ago, 50 years ago? It, this has been a process, okay. but I think that, that, that Trump in the White House is, has, has just, the system's gone completely mad, you know? Mm -hmm. The mask is off. Yeah. That's how I would put it, right? That this, was a, this has been a, a long time coming. Um, the building blocks for this were laid not just by the Republicans, but yes. also by the Democrats. This is a kind of a culmination. The mask is off. There's no intermediary. It's a corporate coup is the way I see this, mm -hmm. right? Um, there's no longer any pretext that it's anything but what it is. This cabinet of millionaires and billionaires and just the, kind of the worst, the worst that this culture can produce yeah. is in charge. Is there. You know? but, is, but, but on the other hand, there is the, the fact that 13 million people voted for Bernie Sanders, that he carried more than 20 states, that in the UK, Jeremy Corbyn um, just defied all the pundits, ran on this hopeful ideas-based campaign. Yes. Um, bold policies at the center, led with ideas, not personality, mm -hmm. right? Put the people front and center. Yeah. And, 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 and we did so much better than anybody could have predicted, yeah, right? And they, may, you know, that, that, you know, the results of that election are still very much in flux in terms yes. of what it's actually gonna mean in terms of government. So it's, it's a moment that is filled with peril and filled with possibility. So could we say there's promise in the problem? I mean, the, I would huh? say, I would say it's kind of now or never. I now, mean, for me, yeah. I, I'm, I'm so immersed in the climate and the climate issue and the climate clock that I, I, I really do feel like it's almost like one of these like superhero moments where like the asteroid is here <laughs> hurtling towards yes. Earth, and it's yeah. like 
it's like we either we either say this at the very last second, and and now it's not just like stop it. It's like turn it around, Absolutely. right? Um, because just stopping it isn't enough. And this is why, um, you know, that I think it's so important that at the People Summit we're interrogating this idea of just resistance, because as you say, um, you know, even if we were to beat back every one of the blows that are coming yeah. now under Trump, mm -hmm. which we won't, mm -hmm. realistically, mm -hmm. then all we would be is exactly where we were before Trump arrived, right. and that was a crisis That's on right. multiple different yes. levels, right? So we have to do something different and complicated, which is the no and the yes at the same time, defense office at the same time. All of it. We cannot just be standing where we were before We can't Trump. be single. So, so, so you wrote, you know, a new, <laughs> Your new book, No Is Not Enough, which is a really big deal. I'm holding it in my hand <laughs> right now. Thank you for that. No yeah. <laughs> is not enough. It is it. Talk to share share with yeah. the real news viewers why you felt that you had to express that, yeah. especially in the era. And make era it really of Trump. clear, right? Yeah. In the cover. No is not enough. <laughs> it's not enough. Not enough. Yeah. Well, I you know, honestly it was hard one. It it should be obvious, but it came out of a book that I published 10 years ago uh, called The Shock Doctrine, which was trying to expose how in the midst of crisis, that's the moment when we lose the most traditionally, right? When, 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 when like the ultimate example of this is Hurricane Katrina, right? The city is still partially underwater and what is happening? There's a meeting in Washington at the Heritage Foundation. The Republican study group has convened all of the right-wing think tanks and all the you know, most right-wing lawmakers, and they come up with a list, their wish list, of what they call free market solutions to Hurricane Katrina. Privatize the school system, get rid of public housing, tax-free, free enterprise zone. Just use this tragedy, the fact that the, the residents of that city have been boarded at gunpoint uh, and scattered throughout, given one-way tickets. I mean, I don't need to tell you the story, right? Yeah. And to say, well, this is a good time to privatize the school system, right? So, you know, when I wrote The Shock Doctrine, I gave many examples of how this had happened, how shock and crisis for the four decades had been the midwife, although it's not fair to midwives, who I have a great amount of respect <laughs> yes. for, that shocks have been these moments when we've lost the most, because, because, and this incredibly anti-democratic tactic has been used. I thought if people understood this, that if we just called it out, if we just said no, then we'd be able to stop it. But when the 2008 financial crisis happened, we did say no. All around the world we said no, and we called it out, and we said we won't pay for your crisis. But what? But the fact is this brutal well, austerity. we did pay for it. We did. We did. This, and this brutal austerity agenda still advanced. And it's because if there isn't an alternative that is on the table, and if we can't believe in it ourselves with all of our hearts, as much as we believe in rejecting their agenda, how do we expect anybody else to believe, right? So you're, you're really calling upon people with this no is not enough, that they must act, that they must be actively engaged. Because in the same and way propose. that you gave examples of how Republicans, some Republicans, were able to use the crisis in, you know, crisis of Katrina for the Gulf states, uh, particularly, yeah. you know, uh, to, to to push out people. If we had policymakers in office that had a different vision, you would have, you could have been writing about the alternative. That, in other words, sometimes in crisis, great things yes, could happen absolutely. if you have the right leadership in place. It, it's it's that push and pull between the, the great leadership in place yeah. and the social movements with the vision, with the courage to put pressure on those leaders. You know, one of the great tragedies to me it, it, is, is 2009. You know, Obama had the electoral mandate. He did. More than the electoral mandate, he had three of the most powerful economic engines in his hands, the banks, the car companies, and he had an $800 billion stimulus bill to write. Yeah. But the, but the constraints of neoliberalism carried the day, right? They just wanted to get rid of the auto companies. They didn't want to think, well, maybe they, maybe they should be making public transit or, mm -hmm. you know, electric cars or, you know, if they've failed, maybe we could change them, we Build right? our infrastructure. Yeah. I mean, so many yeah. places in the United States, we don't have good rail systems, let's know high speed rail. Yeah. And our yeah. sisters and brothers all over the world, places like China, I mean, this is 
I hate to use the word foreign, but it's just unthinkable that a nation like the United States of America would not make more investment in rail systems and public transportation. And this is huge job creation. Yes, it is. And, and it protects the environment, which brings me back yeah. to, some, to, to, the, to, to this issue that you are really, really passionate about. You know, here at the People's Summit, we're talking about all kinds of things. Some people are here because they care about income and wealth inequality. Some people are here because they care about immigration reform, voting rights. I mean, you name it, people are here. Yeah. But as I was talking to one of our dear friends, Paul Jay, mm -hmm. who believes, I think, in the same way that you do, that if we don't tackle what is happening to Mother Earth, mm -hmm. there is nothing else left for us to fight for. What would be your recommendations for movements like yeah. the People Summit? How do we make the environment, the, the umbrella, if you will, or yeah. the foundation point by which we build on every other thing? Well, the fact is, it is, right? It just yeah. is. Like, yeah. this is this is our infrastructure. You know, we talk about roads and, you know, um, at bridges, but our infrastructure is also the atmosphere, our water, our soil. This is the go. infrastructure that yeah. holds us, our living infrastructure, right? Yeah, that's a great um, way to put it. And so, you know, we are in a big tent, if you will, <laughs> whether it's just a question of whether we notice it, right? The, the tent is is the atmosphere. Well, even Mother Earth is not, <laughs> is it not sex? I mean, why aren't people just outraged, just running in the streets? Well, part of this is, is this myth of separation. I mean, this is why I say this. It's like, it's not about, you know, how do we do it? It's how do we notice it? Because, it, you know, this is an illusion yeah. that we are apart, that, you know, that, 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 that somehow we are safe within this bubble of, you know, air conditioning and, you know, the water that seem magically appears and the lights that magically turn on. I mean, all of it is dependent on living systems. Uh, and if we do it right, we can be protecting cycles of regeneration. If we do it wrong, um, then we are killing those cycles, right? Yes. And so we're doing it wrong. Um, but, but you know, the point of saying that, that it's our infrastructure means that, you know, I've always really disliked this argument of like, first we'll save the earth because it's the most pressing issue. And if we don't save the planet, you know, um, then 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 you know, the, the, we won't be able to fight poverty and we won't be able to fight racism. Yeah. Like every one of these crises are a five alarm fire for the people on the front lines. Um, you can't say, well, first we'll save the planet and, you know, then we'll worry about putting food on the table or, you know, stopping police violence. Like that's madness. That's how you build a very homogenous movement. Yes. Right. So the task is how do we design and fight for integrated policies and solutions. So it is possible to if change our energy system so that the people who are most economically excluded, whose kids have the highest asthma rates, who's, who's, who are dealing with cancer clusters because their bodies have borne the toxic burden of, of the addiction to fossil fuel, are first in line to own and control their own clean energy cooperatives, yeah. right? So this is kind of energy reparations. Mm -hmm. It's not just ener it's mm -hmm. energy democracy, so you have a fair economy, but you you bake the justice in, in. right? And so we can do yeah. it all. We can we can do it all, and this is what really excites me. And so I think that there's been some wonderful talk about you know, intersectionality and silo busting, and it's it's I think everybody is there, you know, certainly at the summit here, understanding that. But sometimes I feel like um, we think that it's just a question of making a long list, you know, where we just check off all the issues. Mm -hmm. And I think I we feel should, that it, way. it's really about another story, yeah. right? And um, and and coming up with these solutions that solve multiple problems. They roll into each other to me, like it's a never ending. But what are your thoughts about how, do you believe that the movement needs a structure or a center, if you will, to be able to take this from movement to planning to actually winning, and yeah. when I mean winning, not just electorally, but that's part of it, because you got to have people in office yeah. who will push policies that says yeah. that the people in Flint deserve yeah. clean water. You know, I just interviewed a young lady that represents, that is an activist from West Virginia, cool. and she was sharing that some parts, uh, some citizens in some parts of West Virginia, they, they don't have clean water either. Yeah. yeah so, but to course. have all of these activists yeah. here telling their stories and also trying to learn from each other and then take all of that back home. Yeah. Do you believe that the movement needs a structure or a center yeah. to be stronger? I, it needs a structure. I don't, 
I mean, center is a complicated word, okay, but, okay. I, but I, I think it needs multiple centers. Okay. Um, but I think it needs a structure, and I think it, I think people need to see the plan. You know, like I think that there's a that 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 we need. I mean, my I mean, my hope, what I would love to see come out of this process, and and and, and all of this sort of social movement uh, um, surge in, in this moment, is uh, is a movement towards towards democratically creating people's platforms. That any politician that wanted the support of this amazing movement of movements yeah. would have to follow, right? I want the people to lead, right? Yes. And, 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 and so I think there needs to be mechanisms to hold any politician that comes along and says, well, I'm the savior, I'm the progressive you know, yeah. candidate in this moment. Um, like, what's the mechanism? I mean, the Tea Party had a mechanism. They did. Yeah. And they yeah. made, they, they, they challenged the elites within that party and they said either you do it our way or we're we're, we're basically coming for your seat yeah yeah and they did they yeah. did do just what they promised so, I, so I, I do think that that this movement of movements should have a structure where we see okay what's the road what's the process going to be where we're going to where we're going to we're going to lay out our vision our, our the world we want yeah. you know um, yeah. our platform and then, and, and part of that, you know, drafting will have the politicians who are going to run, but I see it as really important for holding politicians accountable as well, because I do worry, people are so busy, Nina. Like, yeah, this is the thing. I, I mean, there are so many fights going on right now. So you've got the, you've got the defensive, the, the, but the fights of the no, which we can't, we can't not fight the no battles. Like, you've got mm -hmm. to stop the pipelines. Yes. You've got to stop police violence. Yes. You've got to defend health care like it's that's not an option we might not like it but that those fights have to happen at the same time yes can we have to get people ready to run for office at every level but I would but I would just argue that we also have to save some space to dream <laughs> you know Man. about uh, about the world we need because it's not a luxury um, you know that's what that that's good that's the moral center yeah, it is, and it really is. In in in, re, in reality, the house that the nurses build, and as you mm -hmm. said, Senator Sanders built, is really one of his quotes about never lose your sense of outrage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is really, I think, pivotal to what you're talking about, which is to use the no, and put that no into into action. So you. You're saying no to racism, no to sexism, no to polluting water, no to just letting our sisters and brothers languish, but then take that no to the next level and make it actionable in some way in our very own communities. But what has really stuck with me in all of our conversation is when you said, leave some room to dream, mm -hmm. to hope. Mm -hmm. What would you say to people who are feeling a bit hopeless right now? Mm -hmm. Well. That actually, that those the dreams are what sustain us, you know, um, and 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 also just the reason why it's hard to do, like to th say, well, this is what I can imagine my community looking like, you know, or like imagine not just fighting for a job, but fighting to have free time, yes. <laughs> you know, quality of life. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, people are fighting so hard to have work. Yes. That we can sometimes forget that. We that works not all we are, you know, and that, and that, and and so. But some people believe, Naomi, that poor people shouldn't have quality of life. They shouldn't be able to take a vacation every now and then. They shouldn't have downtime with their kids because wealth affords you all of those luxuries. And that poor people, I mean, just work, right? The working poor, they work, 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 and they never take the time to get to, to be introspective. Yeah, yeah. The memory that working class struggles fought for bread and roses, you know, um, and 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 for the right to weekends and the right to free time, yes, you know, yes. and, 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 and for all we need. And so, um, you know, bring, bring, we don't learn this stuff in school. That's stamped out. Yeah. Um, but, you know, what the thing that really inspired me about, about um, Jeremy Corbyn's campaign, right, is that when you put these ideas out there in the culture, um, People are so attracted to them, and particularly young people. People respond. Yeah, yeah. and young people who have grown up made more outside the spell of neoliberalism than my generation, right? Because you know they've only been pol politically active for maybe ten years. Yeah. 
really since Wall Street collapsed. Yes. So they haven't been as ideologically indoctrinated mm -hmm. as people like me who grew up in the 80s and 90s, mm -hmm. right? Where it was the full on, like selling us these policies as if they were going to work. Nobody even bothers to do that yeah. anymore. So there yeah. is this vacuum and there is this tension because on the one hand, progressive ideas are more popular. You see all these kids walking around in t-shirts that call themselves socialists. It's yes. like, what? This is new. It's the cool thing. <laughs> yeah, the cool right? kids are democratic socialists, <laughs> like one that we adore so much. But in my generation, mom. you know, the real yeah. radicals were anti-capitalists. But yes. they didn't say... They didn't say socialists. Yeah. So this is a, no, that this was is a bad word. Yeah, you didn't want yeah. to be associated with but that. But on the other hand, some very ugly ideas are also surging into the vacuum left yeah. by neoliberalism. Um, you know, white supremacist ideas. Um, and so, you know, the moral responsibility to rise to this historic moment is is huge. I mean, someday, some, sometimes, you know, when I really think about it, when I think about that and I think about climate change on top of that, I think, my God, we just cannot afford to screw up. We can't. The, the, the meteor is coming down. <laughs> <laughs> right, we got to get it right then and there. We got to crush it right then. And there. Well, Naomi, thank you so much for being such a wonderful activist, advocate, author of No is not. Let me let me get it up right. <laughs> no is absolutely unequivocally not enough. Mm -hmm. And Naomi, thank you for reminding us that in all everything that we're fighting for and or fighting against, that we do need to take the time to dream. I am Nina Turner. This is the Nina Turner Show, and you are watching The Real News Network. You know, resistance is really good, but we have to take that resistance to action because anybody can put the problems out. Anybody can talk about the challenges, but it takes a little more to go deeper and to be able to talk about the collective solutions, the things that will move us to action so that we really get to see and feel the change that is needed to advance our cities, our states, and this nation. If you believe in the mission, subscribe. If you believe in the cause, donate. If you believe in the change that we are pushing here at The Real News Network, we need you to watch and to share The Nina Turner Show.